Now, from Studio 41 on the Country Club Plaza, this is Kansas City Live. <laughs> Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Kansas City Live. I'm Michelle Davidson. Hey, I'm Michael Mackey. Good morning and happy Monday. Okay, we got a big show today. Mm -hmm. Actor John Amos from Good from Good Times is here today, and um, he was also in The West Wing. And we also have Bizarre Foods host mm -hmm. Andrew Zimmern on today, and he eats some weird things. Weird. Really? Like what? Um, What's the weirdest? Like bugs? <laughs> Well, among other things. I don't want to give it away. I, he tells what his weirdest thing is. But I, and he also, he and I have brains. this. He eats brains. He and I also have the same hatred of the same one particular food item. Isn't that weird? What a quinky. Mm. What a quinky dinky. Okay, well, we're also doing double duty in the kitchen. Yes. We are making a cocktail involving chocolate. Yay. That's my segment. I, know. I never get the drinking segments. I'm kind of excited for that one. That a girl. We're also whipping up a king cake on this Mardi Gras Eve, There's, which is pretty cool. It's like a giant cinnamon roll with like flavors, and so it's a good day. Nothing healthy on the show today. <laughs> Score. It's going to be awesome. All right. Well, a major news story circling the globe this morning. After nearly eight years, Pope Benedict, Benedict the 16th says he doesn't have the strength to fulfill his duties and will resign at the end of the month. That will make him the first pontiff in 600 years to step down. The 85-year-old Pope made the bombshell announcement in Latin during a meeting of Vatican cardinals, surprising even those who worked closest with him. The Vatican stressed that no specific medical condition prompted Benedict's decision. His older brother said doctors had recently advised the Pope not to take any more transatlantic flights. The Vatican said immediately after his resignation, Benedict would go to the papal summer retreat south of Rome and then would live in a cloistered monastery. The announcement sets the stage for a conclave in March to elect a new leader for the world's one billion Catholics. And yeah. that, you don't know how long it could go on. They have to have that, you know, majority. Right. So. And there are reportedly several papal contenders in the mm -hmm. wings, but no obvious front runners. And that was the same situation when Benedict was elected in 2005 after the death of uh, Pope John Paul II. So it'll be interesting it, to follow. Who will it be? Who will it be? Interesting. Well, what do you think about the Pope's resignation? Yeah, and what do you think the Catholic Church should look for in its next leader? Well, we're doubling up on today's Casey Live poll, and we want to hear from you. Yeah, just head over to our Facebook page to share your thoughts. Facebook slash Casey Live TV. There you go. All right, well, we have some great news to share about the Kansas City Chorale. Yeah, yeah, the talented group of singers stopped by KC Live a few days back to perform one of their songs before heading off to the Grammys, where they were nominated for three, ga three Grammys. Today, we know the news. They won all three. All three, all three baby. Yeah. How about that? The Kansas City Chorale won Best Choral Performance and Best Engineered Album Classical, plus the album's producer also won Producer of the Year Classical, so a big... Hearty congratulations goes out to each and every one of them this morning. They are so talented. When they were uh, performing in our studio, I just like stopped in awe of their skills. Uh, and then there's this one little, tiny little girl, it's not a girl, woman, just tiny, and she just belted it. I mean, just blew me away. They're I had goosebumps. So good. Goosebumps through the entire performance. Like the hairs on the back of my neck were standing up. And they're it was all that good. like um, choir directors and have normal jobs in Kansas City, and then they go in three Grammys. It's impressive. Congratulations to them. Yeah, exactly. All right. Last year, the Grammy Awards were practically a one-woman show. Mm -hmm. um, some gal named Adele. Yeah, but uh, this year, <laughs> the 55th annual event spread the wealth a bit more with no one act dominating mm -hmm. the night. Yeah, it was a star-studded evening, heavy on performances. Mark Barger has a recap of the most prestigious awards in the music industry. And the Grammy goes to fun. It was indeed a fun night at the Grammys. The pop group won two of the night's biggest awards, Best New Artist and Song of the Year for their smash hit, We Are Young. I don't know what I was thinking writing the chorus for this song. If this is in HD, everybody can see our faces, and we are not very young. Honors for Record of the Year went to somebody that I used to know. That Gautier tune featuring Kembra was 2012's top selling song, and it brought the Australian artist three Grammys on the night. I feel unworthy to be up here receiving this, but thank you, all musicians and people who listen to music. Cheers. After winning six Grammys last year, one this time around for Adele, best pop solo performance for Set Fire to the Rain. She also announced her successor for Album of the Year. Babel, Mumford and Sons. That folk rock band was a surprise winner in some circles, but they made it two straight wins for the Brits. There's a few of us out there, and 
The Grammys have opened their arms to us, and we're very grateful. When it came to Grammy fashion... As you can see, I read the memo. The pre-show warning about showing too much skin didn't phase some stars, while others had more pressing concerns. Stronger, Kelly Clarkson! Collecting honors on music's biggest night. Mark Barger, NBC News. It was also a big night for the Black Keys. The band won three rock Grammys and lead singer Dan Arbach as a fourth as a producer. Yeah, and Carrie Underwood won for Best Solo Country Performance for Blown Away. And the Zac Brown Band won Best Country Album for Uncaged. R&B newcomer Frank Ocean won twice, including Best Urban Contemporary Album for Channel Orange. Okay, I love that they sent out a memo, which I understand they actually sent out every year, just was leaked this year. Yeah. Uh, to not show skin. And then there's J Lo with, I mean, the leg. It was like the Angelina Jolie yeah. leg. It was just like, and there's her leg. <laughs> I the mean, memo should, the memo it, was was like, like, it was like all the way up. Don't wear, anything, don't wear anything trampy. That's yeah, what it should say. Yeah, don't show too much skin. And then, I mean, why would you even say that for the Grammys? Because that's, you know, come on. Then, then you see the outfits and they're like showing stomach and. Leg. And I love Adele. I love you, Adele. But what was she wearing? Was that a giant strawberry? What was that? What was she wearing? Well, she always wears black. So I actually commend her for not wearing black for okay. once. Michelle so she's you. trying to be adventurous with her fashion. Go for it. Go, you go, Adele. And she's Adele. talented and gorgeous. Yes, she, she is. Even all right. in red. All right, even in red, <laughs> like a strawberry. So I'm just saying. Be nice. uh, <laughs> speaking of all things music, the fellows of Maroon 5 were nominated for three Grammys last night, but oh, they didn't walk away with any wins. However, I would still like to meet them and uh, who wouldn't? Yeah, uh, and we're giving you the chance to do just that. You could meet Adam Levine from Maroon 5 and win two tickets to the sold-out concert. That is How crazy. That? I know. All you have to do is like the KSHB and Mix 93 Facebook pages and then enter to win. We will have links you need on our website, kclive.tv. Adam Levine, hello. I'm kind of a fan of his. I think he's amazing. Let's try and get him on the show. We can do that. We have the technology. <laughs> Adam, if to you're beg watching, him? to beg him, please, grovel, please. please, yes. Well, he's an actor, producer, and playwright, and you know him from hit television shows and movies. Yes, now John Amos is in our green room. We'll tell you why he's in town. And Mixology Monday gives this week a jump start. We're mixing up a chocolate martini, and we'll show you how you can make one, too. Stay with us. Yummo. Tomorrow on Kansas City Live, we're debunking those power tool intimidations with the proper ways to navigate those hardware projects. That's tomorrow at 10 on Kansas City Live.